Today, I'm going to install three different thicknesses of styrofoam insulation on this poured foundation wall and see which one performs the best. I purchased one inch thick, one and a half inches thick, and two inches thick extruded polystyrene. This product seems to be the most widely accepted for use on foundation walls. It may look like I'm working in a prison here, but I'm not. This is actually my house. Although sometimes it does feel like a prison. This product is very easy to work with. Once I've marked my location for my cut, I use a T-square to give me a straight line. Then I use a razor knife to make the cut. This works great with the thinner material, the one inch or inch and a half, but when you get to the two inch stuff, it is more difficult to cut and snap as I'm going to do here. They do sell this hot knife, which I've never used, but it looks like it would work pretty well to cut through the thicker material. Or you could even use a small skill saw, which we've done before, but it does make a mess. So I'm just going to score it one more time here to make sure I'm all the way through. And then snap it off just like that. If you need to make a long cut, I use my friend the chalk box here. I just put a notch right here in the styrofoam. Stretch her out, snap a line, and you're ready to cut it. I'm going to be using two different methods to secure it to the concrete wall. First, I'm going to use this adhesive that is specifically designed for foam board. I've always been told not to use subfloor adhesive or any other type of construction adhesive for foam board because supposedly it will melt it. I've never used it, but we're going to try it out today to see if it does melt the foam board. First up is the foam board adhesive. I like cutting a real big hole in this tube because I need to squeeze out a lot of it for good adhesion. So I got the kids helping out today. I'm going to draw some circles here so they know where to put the adhesive. Sometimes I also have to do this for the grown men that work with me. All right, let's stick her to the wall. Make sure the writing is going the correct way so you don't get a red tag. I'm just kidding, but if you are working with materials that have the specs written on them, it's good to have them facing so the inspector can read them. That only applies to jobs that are getting inspected. If you're not getting any inspections and you don't have any permits for the work you're doing, then you could just buy the one inch material Put the writing towards the wall, tell the homeowner it's two inch material, and charge them for it. Relax, JK, JK, LOL, I'm just kidding. Okay, second verse, same as the first, she's all glued up, now let's stick her to the wall. Okay, looks like the kids are getting the hang of it, so I'm not going to give them any circles this time. Let's see if they could do it on their own. Oh, don't forget to take turns. This kid's pretty good at caulking, but uh, he may end up in the mob someday with this outfit. Many contractors would call this good and begin framing their wall in front of this, but I don't think so because there is still air gaps between the foam and the foundation. I feel it's better to secure the foam to the foundation with a mechanical fastener like these EFIS washers. That stands for Exterior Insulation and Finish Systems. I think that's like the Dravit or Stucco, that type of stuff you see uh, in some of the southern southwest states. I'm going to use these two and three quarter inch tap cons here. Comes with a couple concrete drill bits and a uh, T25 
Torx bit. Pretty handy if you don't have one. We'll just stick that guy right in there. I'm not sure if that's the right way or not, but it's gonna work for what I'm doing. I'm not gonna use those bits that came with it to drill into the concrete. I'm gonna use my DeWalt cordless SD hammer drill, cause it's more fun. You could use those drill bits that came with the tap cons in a regular drill. It'll just take a long time to drill them holes. And I'll screw that guy right in there with the T25 Torx bit and my DeWalt drill. So I mark an X here so the kids could drill a hole with the hammer drill. But it looks like they're on a cartoon break, so I'll just have to drill it myself. Oh, of course they're back after the hard work is done. To keep the tool gods happy, I'm only going to use DeWalt power tools in this video. All right, no playing around on the job. Let's get back to work. Now that these kids are getting a little bit older, I like to get them involved whenever I can. You wouldn't believe how many guys or men or whatever you want to call them in their early 20s show up to work for me and they don't even know how to wrap up an extension cord or even the names of the most basic tools like a caulk gun or a Phillips screwdriver. And I know not everyone's cut out for the trades, but if you're going to show up on a job site, you really need to know the names of the most basic tools before you even get started. So now that we got the panel secured to the wall, let's see if this construction adhesive actually melts the styrofoam. So I got a piece of expanded polystyrene foam and two pieces of extruded polystyrene foam, the pink and the blue. I'm not sure if there's a difference, but we're gonna put some liquid nails on there and see what happens. All right, while we wait for the results here, let's check out the temperature of the foundation and the insulation. So it looks like the exposed foundation wall above grade is 58.4 degrees and the outside air temperature is about 50 degrees today. On the one inch foam we got right around 63 degrees. On the inch and a half foam we have 62.9 degrees. On the two inch foam we have 63.3 degrees. So it looks like it's about 5 degrees warmer on the inside of the foam. I'm very curious what the temperature difference will be this winter when it's zero or 10 degrees outside. All right, let's get back to that construction adhesive. And it looks like it's true. The adhesive is actually eating away at the foam. So make sure you are using the proper adhesive for foam board. And hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. I plan to give updates throughout the winter on the temperatures of this foam board.